Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Trinisphere, where Timmy, Johnny, and Spike battle over all things EDH. I'm Hog, the Spike, and today we will be discussing the people's choice, the man, the myth, the legendary creature, Yogmoth Thran Physician. Before we jump in, remember to like this video to see more like it, and subscribe to watch all of our upcoming gameplays and deck techs. Hit that bell icon and receive a notification whenever we drop a new video. Getting started, I'd like to give credit to two sources for inspiration for this deck list. Darren Habib at MTG Salvation has a pretty awesome and in-depth primer for Yogmoth that if you enjoyed this video, I recommend you check out. And the guys from CommanderTheory.com had some great ideas as well. Links to their pages will be in the show notes. Our commander, Yogmoth Thran Physician, is a 2 black black 2-4 legendary creature human cleric with protection from humans he says pay one life sacrifice another creature put a minus one minus one counter on up to one target creature and draw a card he also says pay black black and discard a card to proliferate and for those who don't know proliferate says choose any number of permanents and or players and give each another counter of each kind already there focusing on that first line we want to go the aristocrats route we want a lot of cheap, recurrable creatures. We have Reassembling Skeleton, Nether Trader, Gutter Bones, Blood Soaked Champion, and Blood Ghast. We also want ways to generate creature tokens effectively for free. So we have Bitter Blossom, Endric Sar, Master Breeder, Ophiomancer, and Pawn of Lumog. We also have some effects that generate us card advantage from sacrificing our creatures. So we have Pitiless Plunderer, three and a black for a 1-4 human pirate that says whenever another creature you control dies, create a colorless treasure artifact token with sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So this is gonna be great if we're sacrificing our blood ghast every turn. We're gonna be drawing an extra card off of Yogmoth and making a treasure token to ramp us that turn or future turns. And we also have Smothering Abomination, a two black black 4-3 Eldrazi with Devoid and Flying that says at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. And whenever you sacrifice a creature, you draw a card. So using Yogmoth's first ability with a Smothering Abomination in play, we're gonna get to draw two cards. To help us win the game off of our Aristocrats, we do have three namesake Aristocrat cards. We have Blood Artist, Falconrath Noble, and Zulaport Cutthroat. And they're basically going to, whenever we sacrifice a creature, they're going to drain our opponents for life, gain us life, deal damage to our opponents. And depending on how many times we can do it in a turn, could kill our opponents. They're very good with these cheap, recurrable, aristocrat-style creatures that we have in this deck. The second line of Yogmoth, the black black discard a card proliferate, makes us want to focus on mainly planeswalkers. And we have some very good ones in this deck. They will be mono black and colorless, Karn Liberated, Liliana Dreadhorde General, Liliana Heretical Healer, who I know is not a planeswalker to start, but as we will be sacrificing many creatures in this deck, Liliana Heretical Healer won't be that difficult to flip. And when she's flipped, we will get her full advantage with the proliferate engine that is our general. We have Liliana of the Dark Realms, Liliana the Last Hope, Liliana Vess, Obnixilis Reignited, Soren Markov, Ugin the Ineffable, and Ugin the Spirit Dragon. So these are going to be really great because we can play them. Say we have seven cards in hand. We have access to Cabal Coffers because we're in mono black. So we can make a bunch of mana, discard our hand, get all of our Planeswalkers into ultimate range, and then ultimate them as soon as they come into play. And a lot of these Planeswalkers have back-breaking ultimates or emblems. Liliana Dreadhorde General, for instance, each opponent chooses a permanent they control of each permanent type and sacrifices the rest. If that doesn't win you the game, I'm not sure what will. Outside of Planeswalkers, we have some other cards that work well with Proliferate, kind of passively, that just give us a little edge on the game. We have Astral Cornucopia. Every time we're going to Proliferate, that's just giving us more mana for the next time we want to use our Proliferate engine. We've got Coalition Relic, Crystalline Crawler, four mana 1-1 Construct with Converge. 
it enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each color of mana spent to cast it. So in this deck, it will only ever come in with one plus one plus one counter because we can only make black mana. However, it says remove a plus one plus one counter from Crystalline Crawler, add one mana of any color to your mana pool, and it can tap to put a one one counter on Crystalline Crawler. So this basically pays for half of the cost of Yawgmoth. And that proliferate will affect all of our other permanents. We have Everflowing Chalice, a zero mana artifact with multi-kicker two. Everflowing Chalice enters the battle field with a charge counter on it for each time it was kicked, and it taps for colorless equal to the number of charge counters on Everflowing Chalice. So this is another one. It's just a passive mana rock. We can play it early, ramp our general out, and then as the game progresses, we're going to keep adding counters to it. We're going to get more mana for our next turns. Poison is obviously a mechanic that we want to focus on here. Whenever Proliferate comes up, Poison is the first thing that comes to my mind because so easy to win the game. As soon as a player hits 10 Poison, they lose. We have a couple of ways to introduce poison into the game. We have Icor Rats, one black black for a 2-1 rat with Infect. Uh, and we're usually not going to attack with it, but his Enter the Battlefield ability gives each player a poison counter. And that's all we need, because once a player has a poison counter, we never have to deal more damage to them. We can simply discard cards to bump their counter up to two, up to three, and so on and so forth until they're dead. Proliferate is the payoff for Yawgmoth's second ability, but the cost is to discard a card, and we have two cards here that work very well with that effect. We have Big Game Hunter, one black black for a 1-1 human rebel assassin. When he comes into play, destroy target creature with power four or greater, it can't be regenerated. And the key thing here is it has madness for black. If you discard this card, you may play it for its madness cost instead of putting it into the graveyard. So this is really key because our general is a discard elf. We can play black black and discard our big game hunter pay an additional black to cast our big game hunter destroy a creature and then proliferate we also have archfiend of ifnir three black black for a five four demon with flying that says whenever you cycle or discard another card put a minus one minus one counter on each creature your opponents control so this is an absolute house when you activate Yawgmoth's second ability, if you have Archfiend of Ifnir in play, you discard a card before the proliferate resolves, so you will be able to put a minus one minus one counter on each of your opponent's creatures and then proliferate them, effectively giving each creature minus two minus two permanently, which will kill off a lot of utility creatures and make your opponent's threats a lot less intimidating. We also have a few cards here that have effects based on what we're doing with our line one or our line two, either our aristocrat theme or our proliferate engine. We have blowfly infestation, contamination, crumbling ashes, dictate of Erebos, necro skitter, and nest of scarabs. And they're all going to give us some kind of advantage to using our commander. They're all cards that have high synergy with him. Moving into our ramp category, we got to make sure we have as much mana as possible. Because like I said earlier with the Planeswalkers, if we can make 10 mana and discard 5 cards to get our Ugin the Spirit Dragon into ultimate range or our Karn Liberated into ultimate range, that's what we want to do. Like that's how we are going to win the game. So we have some really strong ramp in this deck. We've got Black Market, Bubbling Muck, Burnished Heart, Caged Sun, Crypt Ghast, Grim Monolith, Magus of the Coffers, Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, Nirkana Revenant, and Soul Ring. So you'll notice that there's a lot of early game artifact ramp and then late game mana doublers. And those late game mana doublers are going to come in key, but we can't get to those unless we have that early game artifact ramp. Moving on, we have Removal. We have Font of Agonies, a one black enchantment that says whenever you pay life, put that many blood counters on Font of Agonies. And then it says, pay one and a black, remove four blood counters from Font of Agonies, destroy target creature. So this card is very good with our general because we are constantly paying life with Yawgmoth's first ability. So Font of Agonies is going to get its blood counters. And then when we use Yawgmoth's second ability, we can proliferate those blood counters. So this is just great removal that we have access to at all times. We have Gate to Phyrexia, a black black enchantment that says sacrifice a creature, destroy target artifact. Activate this ability only during your upkeep and only once each turn. So mono black has troubles dealing with enchantments and artifacts. So this is almost an auto include. This card is great. We have Plague Crafter, Toxic Deluge, 
Transmogrifying Wand, a three-mana artifact that says it enters the battlefield with three charge counters. Then you can pay one and tap it to remove a charge counter from Transmogrifying Wand to destroy target creature. Its controller creates a 2-4 White Ox creature token. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. So this is great because again, just like Font of Agonies, this is repeatable removal that we can keep using throughout the game because even if it runs down to one charge counter, we can then proliferate it back up to two with our commander. We have some card draw in here. Outside of our general, who has really efficient card draw straight from the command zone, we have a couple pieces just to smooth our draws. We've got Knight's Whisper, Read the Bones, and Skull Clamp. Our general is effectively a Skull Clamp, but Skull Clamp is very good. Whenever equipped creature dies, draw two cards, and it gives the equipped creature plus one, minus one. We have some tutors in here, Demonic Tutor, to fetch anything in our in our deck, any Planeswalker, any piece of removal, any mana doublers, Cage Sun, what have you. We've got Buried Alive to put creatures in the graveyard. This is great because we can Buried Alive to fetch our Bloodgast, and our Blood Soak Champion and our Nether Trader, and then we can get all of those back into play very easily and start abusing our general. We also have Entomb. Uh, I like to play Entomb in any black deck for the same reasons as mentioned before with Buried Alive, but also we're playing Reanimate, so any bomb we want to get off early, if we go turn one Entomb, put a Grave Titan into the graveyard, turn two Reanimate, that game is locked up. We've won that game. We have also have some utility spells here. Like I said before, we're playing Reanimate. We're also playing Whip of Erebos, a two black black legendary enchantment artifact. Creatures you control have lifelink. So this is going to keep our life high. Let us keep doing what we wanna do as long as we wanna do it. And it says pay two black black tap, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. If it would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Activate this ability only anytime you can cast a sorcery. So that lets us get creatures back from the bin, be it a one-time use, but still good in a cinch. And we have Yogmoth's Will, a namesake card for this deck. Two and a black, sorcery. Until end of turn, you may play cards in your graveyard as though they were in your hand. Cards put into your graveyard this turn are removed from the game instead. So where Whip and Reanimate get us creatures back, Yogmoth can get us creatures, but lets us also cast our spells and our planeswalkers, lets us effectively go off a second time. And for good measure, I always like to throw that one big boy in the deck. We have our Grave Titan. For those of you who don't know, mono black staple, four black black, six six giant with death touch. Whenever Grave Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, put two, two, two black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield. So what do you think? Will Yogmoth give Urza a run for his money? Let me know in the comments who you think would win. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, if you're not first, you're last.